Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Niharika, currently a fellow in musculoskeletal imaging in India. I reviewed an article entitled Ultrasound Elastography in Hepatic Fibrosis, and this was published in Radiology in Training under Editorial Reviews and Commentary section in May 2021, Clinical Radiology. So this is a case followed by a case discussion. And going into the history of the case, a 72-year-old woman with an elevated body mass index and moderate alcohol intake presented with past history of abnormal liver function tests. She was a known hypertensive with coronary artery disease and a previous biopsy proven steatosis with early fibrosis was given. The biopsy revealed stage 3 of 4 bridging fibrosis. So clinically, uh, she had no signs of liver cirrhosis on examination, but there was whitish discoloration of the fingernails, which was consistent with chronic liver disease features. Her present uh, liver function test and lipid panel was normal. She was subjected to a one-dimensional transient elastography fibro scan, and the elastic elasticity score was 6.7 kilopascals, which was within the normal range. The interquartile range of the 10 measurements was 0.6 with a corresponding interquartile range to median ratio of 9%. These values suggested metavir F1 to F2 fibrosis. And these findings were not in agreement with the previous biopsy because that would have predicted a greater degree of liver fibrosis. Now ultrasound with two dimensional shear wave elastography was done. And the median shear wave speed for this patient was 1.82 meter per second with an interquartile range to median ratio of 3.7%. The shear wave speed corresponds to the young modulus of approximately 10.1 kilopascals. Shear wave velocities were considered to be elevated and consistent with metavir stage 2 fibrosis or greater. We will have a look into the metavir scoring table later on. So these were the ultrasound images. And uh, there was increased uh, liver echogenicity on the transabdominal ultrasound. The, so this is much greater than uh, when we compare it uh, the liver with the kidney. It is much greater echogenicity compared to the kidney. And this finding, which can be seen in the hepatic parenchymal disease, including both steatosis and chronic liver injury. The main portal vein was patent with hepatopetal flow normal velocity and preserved pulsatility on Doppler ultrasound. There was no splenomegaly or ascites. Utilization of conventional diagnostic ultrasound affords opportunity to obtain complete morphologic assessment of liver, including ability to assess for signs of cirrhosis, portal hypertension, and focal hepatic lesions, none of which were seen in this case. After that, an MRI with and without contrast was done. And these are the in-phase and out-of-phase images. If we compare the in-phase A image with the out-of-phase image B, there is a signal drop in the entire liver, and this is consistent with steatosis. Other supportive evidence of cirrhosis, such as splenomegaly, ascites, or varices was not identified, and no focal mass lesion was seen even on MRI. MR elastography was not performed. Biopsy revealed grade 2 of 3 steatosis and trichome straining demonstrated stage 4 cirrhosis. So non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, also called as NASH, is common and it is increasing in incidence throughout the world as one of the leading causes of cirrhosis. And it is the most prevalent liver disease in the United States. And we know that because of the increasing uh, trend of obesity, because of the uh, uh, frequency of uh, more obese individuals, the frequency of the number of cases of NASH is also increasing. And it is important uh, to detect it early because if, we, if in the late stage liver disease, treatment is very difficult. Also, if it is detected early, lifestyle modification can be advised and glycemic and lipid control also can be performed. So liver biopsy is considered as the reference standard of the gold standard for the diagnosis of the hepatic fibrosis. But this has limitations including procedure associated risks, potential for tissue undersampling, and inter-observer interpretation variability. Ultrasound elastography including transient and shear wave elastography is a non-invasive imaging tool and it is this non-invasive nature which makes it very good for the diagnosis. 
So this is the metaverse staging system for hepatic fibrosis. And this is uh, classified into two parts. One is the grade and one is the stage where the A grade denotes the extent of active inflammation in a given liver, liver biopsy specimen, while the F stage describes the extent of fibrosis. And this ranges from F0 to F4. And there is increasing severity of fibrosis where F4 is the final cirrhosis stage. Now, for following that, there has been a brief discussion on the types of elastography, which is broadly into two types. One is the strain elastography and one is the shear wave elastography. Now, let's see the difference between the two. In case of a strain elastography, a stress is applied by repeated compression. The commonly reported parameters include a strain ratio between two ROIs or fat to lesion ratio. While in case of shear wave elastography, shear waves are generated by the ultrasound probe and these are going to travel in the tissue material and that is going to be documented and the velocity is going to be calculated. So this is uh, of three types basically. One is the transient elastography, one is the point shear wave elastography and one is the 2D shear wave elastography. So an acoustic impulse induces the shear waves which travel perpendicular to the compressive wave. The tissue or particle motion induced by these shear waves is detected by the ultrasound probe and permits an estimation of the liver stiffness. So basically the shear wave elastography will be more uh, uh, sensitive compared to the strain elastography. I mean it will be better because in case of strain elastography we are actually not uh, the waves are not very uniform. It is not a uniform distribution of waves and it will not go as deep as compared to the shear wave elastography where there is a uniform and equal uh, distribution of these shear waves. Now what are the principles of the two dimensional shear wave elastography? So in this case, a patient is first uh, made to uh, at least fasting for four hours and the right arm is abducted in the supine position. Uh, the right side is preferred because the left side is prone to more artifacts related to the cardiac motion or the stomach, etc. So the right, so in, after that, the probe is put and only light pressure is given. The ROI should be at least one centimeter in size and it should be placed 2 cm below the liver capsule and at least less than 6.5 cm from the skin and the rib shadows should be avoided. So after the shear waves are uh, generated, the shear wave velocity is calculated uh, on the B mode ultrasound and finally superimposed color code elastogram scale is uh, done on, the, on top of the B mode ultrasound as seen in the second image. So uh, this is how the, the two-dimensional shear wave elastography is performed and the problem with the ultrasound methods uh, are that they are operator dependent and actually one of the limitation of this uh, discussion that uh, they have not gone into much details of the MRI based methods and only the ultrasound based methods have been discussed and uh, the sensitivity and specificity of those have been compared. The uh, uh, the advantage of this particular article is that it is very good educational, um, it gives a very good educational value to the residents because uh, it is a very clear and concise discussion of a particular case and after that a good discussion has been provided which makes the whole um, uh, commentary very interesting. And uh, to conclude the ultrasound elastography provides a non-invasive means of detecting and quantifying hepatic fibrosis that can identify patients at high risk for progression to cirrhosis and promote earlier intervention. So I hope that was useful and thank you.